Hello, Jesse Good here. Today I'm taking a look at the LEGO Jurassic World Indoraptor Rampage at Lockwood Estate set with 1,019 pieces, six minifigures, and it retails for $130 in the United States. Now let's take a look at those dinosaurs. Here's the Indoraptor, and it's not as big as I imagined. You can see it's about three times the height, at least, as a minifigure in this pose, which I was expecting something the size of the Indominus Rex, and it actually uses a lot of pieces similar to the Indominus Rexes. I'm not sure if it uses any of the same, maybe besides the hands, but there's a lot of new molds going on here. This body right here is a new exclusive molding with six studs up top and this nice olive stripe that just goes all throughout the dyno. You can fully rotate the tail right here, which is one piece um, connected to this piece right here. But to plug in the tail, you just kind of put it to the back right there. The legs move up and down, which is nice, and you can get a lot of different poses with that. Uh, the hands right here um, move independently from the arms, which I like. So you can get some cool poses right there, and those rotate. And those are separate pieces from the arms, which the arms are separate pieces from the body. And this head right here has a little bit of a ball joint going on, so you can get a lot of different poses, and there's a lot of articulation. This head part is also molded um, with a little bit of spikes back there. And you have that jaw that opens and these very creepy eyes. So overall, one of the best dinos of the Jurassic World lines, which makes sense because I guess this is the main dino of Jurassic World, the Fallen Kingdom. So let's take a look at the other ones included in this set. So here is blue and they totally updated this from the 2015 design and it looks so much better. This is the same one that's in the blue helicopter rescue set from this line. So there's really no need to get that set. You can see that you could close his mouth just like that because that's a separate piece. The legs are a separate piece. Uh, the arms are separate pieces. There's four studs up top, and look at this awesome blue stripe. I mean, they really did great with the printing, even onto the little legs right there, and onto the head, which continues all the way at the top. They put all their effort into this one minifigure, and I really do appreciate that. So that is it for blue. There's also one more dino, and that's just this little mini dino right here, which is just too adorable. And this is the same design that appears in two of the other sets. I guess it's like a baby T-Rex or something like that. And those can fit onto one stud right there, or you can make a minifigure hold it. And it is a hard plastic, which is really something that I appreciate because I thought it was going to be just a uh, rubber. So let's move on to the actual minifigures. For the minifigures, I'll start with the exclusive ones first. And this is one of the two exclusives, Gunnar Eversole, which... The design of this is exclusive for that face print that looks pretty cool, but the hair piece in that coloring is also really cool. That was introduced in the Lego Batman movie line, and we haven't gotten it in that orange. And you can see his face print on the back looks very disapproving. And I think they got the actor, which I believe is Toby Jones, very well there. I mean, that looks exactly like him. The gavel accessory is also pretty neat as well. They didn't use the molded gavel, which kind of surprised me, but they used like a brick boat one, and that works just as fun. And then the other minifigure with exclusive printing is Macy Lockwood, which that torso design is exclusive, and I'm sure a lot of people will use that for their sig fig. The face comes in the Jurassic Park set, and you can see the back of the torso and her face right there. And the hairpiece was used with Ginny back in the Lego Harry Potter line. There's Eli Mills, who this character is exclusive, but there's no exclusive printing. That tuxedo is pretty nice, so his face print is extremely overused. I mean, they use it for a random ACU trooper or whatever you want to call it in this line, and it just doesn't fit. And on the back, you can see he has no back facial printing, which is incredibly lame. So here is Owen. This is the same Owen that appears in a lot of the other sets. Nothing new with his torso or face, but I'm sure a lot of people will be glad to get that face for a new version of Star-Lord. He also has a hatchet, which is kind of a violent weapon for this set, and they show him lunging at people in the box of the set, which I think is kind of comical. Here's Claire, and this is a design found in two other sets as well. I like the torso, I like the face, and I like the hair, but uh, pretty common throughout this line. But this isn't like a cheap minifigure to get, because I think the cheapest way is like a $50 junior set. So that's it for Claire. Here's Ken Wheatley, which I like how he comes in this set because he also comes in the helicopter rescue set, which I have no intention of getting. So that's the same exact design as this one with the same face print and everything like that. But other than that, he also has a little tranquilizer gun and a really cool torso with the ammunition printed on it. So here's the build of the set, at least the exterior of the mansion and the interior, which has a lot of different rooms. We have the bedroom this little laboratory right here, the Triceratops head in the middle, which is the opening, and in the left and right wing of the mansion. 
So right as you enter, you can see the Triceratops skull right here, which is one of the best builds of the set. I mean, it looks very organic. I like how they use just regular pieces. They didn't use like a molded head or anything like that. Just makes me wish that we did get Triceratops in the Jurassic World line. What I don't like though, is that this is just kind of plopped in the middle. There's no studs or anything connecting this entry right here. On the adjacent walls, they do have these exhibits. This one seems to have a stegosaurus, if I'm not mistaken. And those are actually really cool stickers. I like how those come out. And there's also one on this side right here, which has some raptors, I believe. And I like how they use this panel piece to make it seem like there's glass over there. And they even have these lights up top. It's a very neat design. They do have these flowers on each side, which have that nice kind of uh, sky blue coloring. And that, of course, right there is the door to enter in, which you can just push open from the outside and let your minifigures explore the mansion. As for the rest of the first floor, the left and right wing of the mansion have these identical designs with this little flower pot, I believe. It's a nice build, but that's it. There's no designs or anything else on the first floor, which I just wish they had a little bit more going on inside this mansion. Now, if you move on to the second floor, you can see that the room directly above that one is and completely vacant on both sides. That's another kind of weak thing. They didn't put any designs or anything inside here, which it seems like wasted space for a $130 set. However, there is a really nice little lab in the middle. A lab is probably the most full fleshed out room of this whole estate where there's this contraption right here, which is either a light or some ember, which you can move up and down. I really like how that turned out. There's a minifigure egg right there, which of course these are used a lot in the Lego Jurassic World line. Now, to the left of it, they have this research station right here where you could put the baby dinosaur to run some DNA tests. And you can see there's a little bit of a light right there. And a printed console, which that's a, such a nostalgic design for me because I remember that in 2006 for a Lego City airplane. I can't believe that was like, what, 12 years ago? Then over here, we have this sticker little computer screen which shows some DNA tests being run, a nice little microscope, and even a printed keyboard. As for the rest of the second floor, they just have a little bit of a balcony going on above the exhibit area. Moving on to the third floor, which has the bedroom. There's a research desk, a little umbrella holder, which is that newer umbrella mold. And the lamp on the desk actually is a nice build where it uses that sausage piece used with hot dogs in black. And they have this bed right here, which has a very unique play feature where if you lift it up, you could hide Macy under the bed so that she could hide from the Indoraptor. And it doesn't close all the way. I mean, there's not really a way to make it close all the way down, but it does hide her pretty well. Now the roof of the building does have this nice little skylight window, which is a very nice design. And that actually is a play feature where if you pull this, you're meant to put the Indoraptor up here. It makes the Indoraptor fall down, which is pretty fun to play around with. There are actually more play features to the set. For example, you could punch out every window in the set and leading out to the balcony, you could see how that turns out. No worries though, because you could easily put the windows back in just by plopping them in like that. But this leads us to the exterior of the building, which is my favorite part of the set. I mean, what you see here is what you get, but there are some little details. That's the window from the laboratory. There's these two stickered little brick designs and lots of small details symmetrical to both sides. I like this little rain pipe right here, the use of the shield piece in tan, how they did these uh, roof parts for each of the wings, and these pieces being used all over the build. The balcony can only fit about two people. Now looking at them on the balcony, I kind of want to throw a house party at this mansion. You can easily push open those bottom doors. Those doors are big enough to fit Owen's motorcycle through them, which speaking of which, Owen's motorcycle is just a little side build. It's the only vehicle to set, thankfully. I'm glad they didn't waste it on like a big vehicle. And the design of it, it's, it's pretty generic, but uh, still a nice little inclusion for the kids. I have been kind of holding back, but let's punch out all of the windows, which this is super fun to do. Um, <laughs> I have to say I had fun kind of setting this up and I was playing around with it when I was building it as well, but look at that. Now the mansion is all messed up and you could kind of pull this part right here. Bam. One last feature I want to kind of mention is how you could rearrange the mansion. These sections can all be easily separated and they all have Technic holes where you could put Technic pins on the side. So let's rearrange it in different ways. Here's one style of the mansion. 
And here's another style of the mansion. Either way, that's it for now. I've exhausted this build. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. The box for this set is huge. You could see the play features on the back. The instructions are a mini book. You could see they have the checklist, uh, the other sets, this weird spinjitsu ad, and then this ad for Lego Life with Owen and Blue. So roll the kids will get this for the Indirector, the adults will get this for that mansion's exterior. And those are definitely the best parts of the set. The Indirector has more posability than most dinos in the line. He's very well made with new molds all together and he has like so much rotation on his head and everything like that. That's great. The exterior of the mansion is my favorite part of the set because I've never seen a full mansion in Lego before. Closest thing would be like Arkham Asylum in terms of just how this looks. I know Arkham Asylum isn't a mansion, but these have beautiful colors. I mean, I love the tan and the red. It's a very mature build on the outside. But the inside, I like the areas that they do have stuff to play around with. I like like the bedroom where they have that uh, bed that you could open. But there's so much empty space. I mean, that whole middle section has no studs to it. The left and right wing right there have nothing in them. I think the bottom, uh, each of the bottom rooms have the same build and it's just a very small build. When you have stuff like that, it's hard to recommend a $130 set because it feels so empty at points. I do like the minifigures, even though they reuse a lot of them um, from different sets, even like blue, but hey, now I don't have to buy that crappy helicopter set. Uh, the exclusive judge is great and the little girl is great for that torso. So if all that considered, I'd rate this one a B. I love that exterior. I love a lot of the figures. I like the play features and even the details where they have stuff to play around with, like the bedroom and the laboratory. But when you have a lot of empty areas, it's hard to recommend a $130 set. This one would have been better priced at, say, $100. So that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.